Kiriko has entered ranked mode today, so to get you up to speed with the Kiriko meta in Season 1, we will be breaking down her playstyle, strength, synergies, and counters, so you can maximize your play as her or playing with or against one. Right after this quick message, two out of three guys experience hair loss before the age of 35. And for Overwatch players, I'm sure that stat's even higher. That's why I'm excited to tell you about today's video sponsor, Keeps. Keeps is all about hair loss prevention. I had too many hours of ranked mode before I learned about the product, which is why you gotta get ahead of it. Keeps is all about keeping the hair you have and regrowing. Stop the molding before it goes too far. Keeps offers clinically proven research-backed treatments to stop hair loss and improve hair growth. The plans are affordable, typically half what you would pay at the pharmacy. Keeps physicians will help you select the perfect treatment plan for you and are available 24-7. Keeps has proven results and customers typically see improvement after six months of treatment. Keeps offers everything for your hair care needs, delivered straight to your door with refill reminders so you never run low on supplies. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com forward slash your overwatch or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S forward slash your overwatch. Now, the first thing we need to dispel is the idea that Kiriko's healing is bad, as if you shouldn't use it. That's not true. If all of her Afudas hit, she actually heals 70 per second. For reference, Mercy heals 55 heals per second, but is a full lock-on, whereas Kiriko's is a soft lock, and you'll often miss some of it. So I think they average out to feel similar in some cases, but surprisingly, if you are set up to not miss the Afudas, you'll heal more than Mercy's. But the issue you'll run into is that she doesn't have a burst healing option like Ana, Batiste, and Moira do. So when lots of your team are injured, or when you need to give your tank a get out of jail free burst of extra life, she's going to be healing for a long time, similar to Mercy, to try to do that job. We're going to advise that her strengths will be flanking with her team, but as long as you're not losing in a death ball mirror, she can function defensively like a budget Batiste just fine. Hanging back behind the team, offering a mix of heals and focus fire, but I'll warn not to get trapped in playing too defensively, otherwise you'll rather be another hero, BAP especially. In the cases where your team comp is better than the enemies, this will be fine. But as soon as the situation calls for it, you'll want to do more, manipulating positioning. This next game is a great example of this because there's a concept in Overwatch 2 that support players need to learn on all their heroes, that dealing pressure damage is a way to reduce damage onto your team. This has always been true for high-level support play, but it's now a necessity, even at the skill floor of the game, a lot of the time where I started to notice that I wasn't going to get away with just healing my team up against the Sojourn who can burst shot them much faster than I can heal them. Because of that, it was required for me to adopt DPS angles and help create crossfires with the team, which is to say taking different angles to funnel the enemy in just like we're playing attack shooter or Call of Duty or any other shooter game. And with that, I either get the kills myself or deal enough burst damage to enable a teammate to finish a kill. I'm still still working out what I think the ideal percentage of split between focusing on healing or shooting Kiriko should have for the average player. In theory, never missing a headshot means you should always shoot, but knowing that you will miss some means that you should really only take the windows of opportunity that you know you can hit one. Mainly because Kiriko's body shot damage is so horrible that if you're hitting body shots, you'd probably much rather be giving healing to your team or just repositioning or something. So here, I want to talk a little bit about a really good aiming technique that works for a lot of projectiles in the games. This is why I'm okay at Junkrat and other fundamentals, let's say, based aim styles, though my aim's obviously not great and whiffs a lot, but a old school FPS trick that you can learn for Overwatch and especially Kiriko is a technique called framing the shot. So the easiest example I have is this enemy Kiriko who's pinned against the wall. Moving forward, she would never do because she would just walk into my Winston. I can guess that she obviously wants to escape. So I don't even attempt to aim at her. I let her escape into my crosshair by assuming the movement frame only leads in one obvious direction, towards the doorway where she wants to escape. I'm letting her aim for me. This is how boomers succeed in shooter games. And after reviewing some of my best shots in gameplay, it's pretty much only this technique that I get away with. Using the technique to frame your shot makes you a much bigger threat up against the flanker characters that normally expect to just be able to run over your backline. This enemy Kiriko I'm up against is probably a lower ranked FPS player and doesn't realize that 
they're existing in a frame. My body is out in the open and I have much more variance in where I can move, making me much harder to predict. But aiming somewhere in the center of this frame leads for a very high percentage chance of a headshot connection. At head height, I can assume she probably wants to get closer to the cart if she's going to contest it or she just leaves and doesn't contest at all either way it would be fine either i get the kill or she runs away it's not too hard of a prediction and then the second shot is just a typical ad strafe into the center of the frame yet again so it's not so much that i'm aiming at the target i'm using the frame that my enemy is creating for me another one where me and anna clutch here by the mega health pack at this point they're winning the fight now this time because we're closer to the target the frame of options for sombra to move are actually more limited it's tighter because she's hungry for this kill i can expect her to want to move forward towards the anna she's running out of space to go further from me going straight north so once we make this read we know we can put the crosshair in basically just one spot for sombra to be in this play whatsoever right in front of her moving to our left letting the enemy's movement aim for me that connects in the head me and anna combo for the kill sombra loses the mp that's embarrassing and again here as i chase the sojourn the closer i get the more it's about tracking but notice this quick jump in crosshair movement where I lead it quickly in front of where the AD strafe is going to go. And then because we're so close, I can slowly track the movement, knowing that Sojourn has already used her best movement option. The movement options for your enemies will change based on their ability kit, hitbox and everything. But when you get engaged with a must win duel, try to imagine the frame of options that they have and don't rush because body shots are so bad. You might as well take a moment to think about the shot, breathe, lower your heart rate, be patient, maintain crosshair focus, and you really can headshot your way to victory. In a previous video, I described Kiriko as the no excuses support. And now I'll talk a bit more about her playstyle. I really think she's the break glass if necessary. DPS Moira playstyle, but with a higher skill ceiling. It's often in Overwatch 2 that your team gets split just by the nature of the way the gameplay pans out. Here I have to mix the decisions of peeling for my back line, supporting my front line, and avoiding death myself. I stay juggling the two as long as I can until I think I'll get targeted, zip out, reinforce the back, we deal with that threat, and then can telly right back to the front to ensure Sigma doesn't fall from the rest of the enemies. Teleporting on both ends of the fight like that is insane with Kiriko. And while the raw stats of other supports might be higher, the uptime you're going to get of being actively in the play, but also not dying for it, is pretty incredible. To add on to that concept, I want to now discuss what I think is probably the best playstyle for Kiriko, and I think that's playing with Winston. This is why I ranked him and her so highly on my Kiriko tier list. We're now finally getting the ranked meta that that tier list was for, and here's a few reasons for that. Winston's leap is on a five-second cooldown. Kiriko's telly is on a seven-second cooldown. So while that's not entirely one-to-one, -one, it is close enough to jump in and out with Winston. And you might be thinking to yourself, like, what's the most effective way to utilize the big burst of damage Karika can do. Well, I'll tell you, it's to have reliable cleanup damage alongside her. Most of the time, you'll expect to deal one headshot, have something injured, it begin to want to run away or use cover, and you need something to flush it out, like a Genji or a Winston. Characters that are very accurate and can play aggressive with their face. And because Winston has a bubble, that means Kiriko has extra cover to use to set up her own headshots. And something to remember, that support passive of self healing after a second and a half out of combat works insanely well on a character like Kiriko who doesn't have a way to heal herself with an ability but she doesn't really need it when she's got the mobility and Suzu to have like two escapes to enact that self-heal anyway so using teammates as escape routes or the bubbles or shields of a main tank I think is a great way to navigate the fight with Kiriko rounding out Kiriko's kit now just a few tips for you try to remember a very important rule of all video games really health in Overwatch is a resource. I think it was Jake who said this very impressive quote for teaching this concept. I have a question for you. How much damage does a character do in Overwatch at one HP? The answer is easy. It's a trick question. They do 100% of their damage. All their abilities, all their damage, all their attacks still work 
even if they only have one HP. So because of that concept, you can focus on dealing damage when your team doesn't actually need health. Now, of course, you don't want to neglect healing and let someone die when you could have healed them. But to that degree, most things don't need full health to be effective. You instead want to heal them up past the break points of the things that could kill them. So to make sure you don't get like body shot by a far rocket or something. And also, of course, your tanks are more durable if you keep them inside armor health. So being topped up as a tank is a lot more threatening and being at one HP, those are just a few ways to break that rule. An important note where the rule does come in is when using protection Suzu. Now this is an ability that high ranked players are probably gonna call the most OP in the game, but it can be very challenging to utilize meaningfully. And the best way to utilize it is to try to follow that one HP rule where having invulnerability is most effective right before something was going to die. So right before the Rhine pin is going to land on your teammate, right as that big ultimate is about to find its mark, that's when you want to land the Suzu in the exact moment of contact to block that incoming damage or right before your team was going to fall because then you can heal them up thereafter. Using Kiriko's ultimate, I think the most effective things to pair with it is the most reliable sources of damage. So the things that are easiest to hit, because if a ability is too skillful to land, including Kiriko's attack, by the way, you might just be in the ult and whiff. But the extra fire rate will be very effective when comboed with easy to land abilities, such as the cleave attacks from Reinhardt and Winston or auto target attacks like Soldier Sights. While I'm sure we'll see Reddit clips of your Cassidy hitting every single shot and using the cooldown reduction to get two sticky nades off, in a team fight, most of the time I suggest you ulting to pair with a teammate that has easy to land damage. And oh yeah, a fun tip is that the healing of Fudas come out faster too in your ultimate. So you'll actually be healing double with it, which if you don't think you've got a good shot to take with the kunais, I think healing is just fine. Now it's not as much healing as a defensive ult, but it's like a pseudo defensive ult, sort of similar to how Batiste's window feels, where this is the one time where her healing output does have a bursty effect, but it's not going to outdo a lot of ultimates, so don't expect it to. Now, some quick counterplay for the Kiriko ult, which can seem like a quite devastating ability. I feel like there's quite a lot of area of effect attacks that are very good at countering it. Throwing down a dragon strike in the middle of it is maybe the most direct one-to-one -one spatial control version of this, but having a barrage or Junkrat tire or Bob to throw into the mix as she's launching Kiriko ult can be insane. But I've also found just having a main tank to be quite nuts in general to counter Kuriko anyway. You see, something about having a Kuriko on your team means you don't have an Ana or a Zen, or at least not both of them. Ana and Zen are the best ways to make the enemy tank's life miserable with the disables and extra pressure. And unlike characters like Lucio and Zen, Kuriko can't really multitask and her body shot or shield break damage is horrible. You might not think as supports being too important for bursting down tanks, but they really are. Whether it's with their abilities or having the opportunity to multitask like Batiste can, he can heal his Rhine and shoot the enemy at the same time, in between shots, all right? Kriko not only can't do that, her attack is incredibly weak if it's not hitting the head. And characters like Rhine and Winston playing around their shields, your head's not really even visible a lot of the time. But on top of that, having a barrier to put in place of the Kuriko ult really slows down its value. And playing defensively with an Earth Shatter waiting against a team that want to rush in towards you, well, that's kind of a Reinhardt's dream, isn't it? Another reason why I consider Winston strong against Kuriko is because he can damage multiple enemies. Kuriko can really only effectively heal one. So the flexibility to poke something at range and then maybe cleave multiple, you can overwhelm her healing values. And it's that kind of matchup where you start to miss some of those extra healing abilities that make Winston's damage irrelevant. Winston Winston's ultimate was not as effective as I thought it would be so far in my testing, but also some of this footage was on the bugged version of Zen, who apparently was shooting giga fast, faster than intended with the Kiriko ult. So maybe that's why I got farmed, but either way, like a Discord orb farms Winston in any case. So I don't suggest you trying to brawl it up with your primal inside of the Kriko ult because it's probably gonna be too much damage. But at the very least, having a mobility cooldown to get away from it is one of the bigger ways to counteract it. It's sort of the interesting thing about Kuriko as a character where 
She's sort of a dive character by default. And if you're in a dive mirror, her ult starts to look a lot worse because everyone's got mobility. Well, it's sort of tough to lock anything down. The Kriko ult is going to be most devastating when a target can't get away from it and they just get overwhelmed by a reliable bit of damage just being doubled all of a sudden running at them. I hope you guys enjoyed this Kiriko meta guide. If you found it useful, please let me know in the comment section down below. Hit the like button to show the channel support and check out today's video sponsor, Keeps, where if you use our link in the description, you can get 50% off your first order of hair loss treatment. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.